we are looking for all pairs of prime numbers, p and q, that satisfy the equation p cubed minus q to the fifth equals the square of the quantity p plus q. The mix of exponents suggests that a direct algebraic solution is unlikely. Instead, we will use properties of prime numbers and divisibility to constrain the solutions. The first step is to analyze the equation's structure. The properties of squares will provide an initial constraint on the relationship between p and q. We begin with the given equation. The term on the right, the square of p plus q, is strictly positive since p and q are positive integers. This observation has an immediate consequence for the left side of the equation. Therefore, the left side of the equation must also be strictly positive. Rearranging this inequality gives a direct comparison between p cubed and q to the fifth. To get a direct comparison between p and q, we can take the cube root of both sides. This implies that p must be strictly greater than q raised to the power of 5 over 3. Because q is a prime, its smallest possible value is 2. The quantity q to the power of 5 thirds is always greater than q itself. For example, if q is 2, q to the 5 thirds is approximately 3.17, which is greater than 2. This proves that p is strictly greater than q. Consequently, p and q must be distinct primes. The next step is to rearrange the equation into a form that is suitable for a divisibility analysis. We begin again with the original equation. First, we expand the square of the quantity p plus q on the right-hand side. The strategy is to isolate common factors. We will rearrange the equation by grouping all terms containing p on the left side and all terms containing q on the right side. This rearrangement groups the terms by variable. This arrangement reveals common factors on both sides of the equation. Factoring p from the left side and q squared from the right side yields this key equation, which is central to the divisibility argument that follows. This factored form allows us to use divisibility arguments to constrain the possibilities for p and q. Let's analyze this equation from two different perspectives. First, the prime q must divide the right-hand side, and therefore must also divide the left-hand side. As p and q are distinct primes, q cannot divide p. This implies q must divide the other factor, the quantity p squared minus p minus 2q. Since q clearly divides the term negative 2q, and q divides the entire expression, it must also divide the remaining part of the expression. This leads to the conclusion that q must divide p squared minus p. Factoring out p shows that q must divide p times the quantity p minus 1. As p and q are distinct primes, q cannot divide p. Therefore, q must divide the factor p minus 1. This is our first major constraint. Now for the second divisibility argument. The prime p must divide the right-hand side. Since p and q are distinct, p cannot divide q squared. Therefore, p must divide the quantity q cubed plus 1. This is our second major constraint. Using these two divisibility constraints, we can begin to eliminate possible solutions. Let's focus on our second constraint. We can factor the expression q cubed plus 1 as a sum of cubes. Since p is prime, it must divide at least one of these factors. We should consider if p could divide both. If it did, p would have to divide their greatest common divisor. The greatest common divisor of q plus 1 and q squared minus q plus 1 can be shown to divide 3. This would imply p equals 3. However, our initial inequality showed that p is greater than q to the 5 to thirds, which is not possible for p equals 3. Thus, p divides exactly one of these two factors, which allows us to split the problem into two cases. Case 1, p divides the quantity q plus 1. If p divides q plus 1, then p must be less than or equal to q plus 1. 
However, we recall our initial inequality, p is greater than q to the 5 thirds. Combining these two inequalities leads to a potential contradiction. This composite inequality states that q to the 5 thirds is less than p, which in turn is less than or equal to q plus 1. However, the function q to the 5 thirds grows much faster than q plus 1. For the smallest prime, q equals 2. q to the 5 thirds is already greater than 3. For all primes, this inequality is impossible. Therefore, case 1 is impossible. This leaves only one possibility. Case 2, p must divide q squared minus q plus 1. Now we will combine our remaining constraints to determine the solution. From this divisibility condition, we can write q squared minus q plus 1 equals m times p for some positive integer m. Now, we will use our other constraint, that q divides p minus 1. This is most effectively applied using modular arithmetic on this equation. The condition that q divides p minus 1 is equivalent to saying p is congruent to 1 modulo q. We will now reduce the equation for m and p modulo q. On the left side, q squared and q are both congruent to 0 modulo eq. On the right side, p is congruent to 1 modulo eq. The equation simplifies significantly. This shows that m must also be congruent to 1 modulo q. This congruence implies m could be 1, or q plus 1, or 2q plus 1, and so on. To determine the exact value of m, we will use our initial inequality. By rearranging the definition of m, we can express it as this fraction. Since p is greater than q to the 5 thirds, we can establish an upper bound on m. Simplifying the fraction gives a more explicit upper bound for m. The dominant term here is q to the 1 third. This means m must be less than the cube root of q. We now have two constraints on m. m is congruent to 1 modulo q, and m is less than the cube root of q. Let's express the congruence explicitly. M equals 1 plus k times q for some integer k greater than or equal to 0. If k were 1 or greater, then m would be at least q plus 1. However, for any prime q, the value q plus 1 is greater than q to the 1 third power. This would contradict our upper bound for m. Therefore, k must be 0. This implies that m must be exactly 1. Substituting m equals 1 back into our equation for p provides a direct formula for p in terms of q. With this direct relationship established, we can now substitute this expression for p back into our main factored equation to solve for q. Let's return to our factored equation. We factor the q cubed plus 1 term. Now, we can substitute p for q squared minus q plus 1 on the right side. This substitution simplifies the equation. Since p is a prime, it is non-zero. This means we can divide both sides by p. This simplifies our equation significantly. Let's expand the right side to get a clearer polynomial form. Distributing the q squared gives q cubed plus q squared. Now, adding 2q to both sides isolates the p terms. Now, for the final substitution, we replace p with q squared minus q plus 1. This gives a polynomial equation solely in terms of q. We can factor out a q from both sides. Since q is a prime, it is non-zero, so we can divide by it. Expanding the left side yields this cubic equation. To solve this polynomial, we will set the entire expression equal to zero by moving all terms from the right side to the left. This prepares the equation for simplification. Now, we combine the like terms. This gives us the simplified cubic equation. This polynomial can be factored by grouping. This results in the product of q squared plus 1 and q minus 3 being equal to 0. Since q is a prime number, q squared plus 1 is always positive. This implies that the only way for the product to be 0 is if the other factor is 0. 
This gives the unique solution, Q equals 3. Plugging in Q equals 3, we first calculate that 3 squared is 9. Then 9 minus 3 is 6. Finally, this gives P equals 7. Both 3 and 7 are prime numbers as required. The logical deduction leads to a single solution pair, P equals 7, Q equals 3. Finally, we will verify this solution in the original equation. We will substitute P equals 7 and Q equals 3 into the original equation. This gives 7 cubed minus 3 to the fifth on the left and 10 squared on the right. Evaluating the powers gives 343 minus 243 and 100. The equality holds. The solution is correct. In conclusion, the only prime pair satisfying the equation is P equals 7, Q equals 3. The solution was found not by direct algebraic manipulation, but by using number theoretic constraints, inequalities, factorization, divisibility, and modular arithmetic to systematically eliminate all other possibilities.